Hey guys, so I'm here today to film a products I regret purchasing video. I put them all in my Sephora bag um, because I'm actually going to return some stuff to Sephora today because uh, it's Christmas and your girl is poor and if I don't like this stuff, I'm going to return it. I don't care. That's for Sephora's return policy is pretty decent. Usually within a year, if you return it, they'll give you a store credit and if it's less than, if it's like within 30 days, they'll give you an actual refund. So I'm refunding shit because if I'm not going to use it, what's the point in me keeping it? There is none. Uh, first thing I have in here is the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk Palette. I bought this during the Sephora VIB sale and like when I look at it I'm like oh my god it's so beautiful but what drew me in were the reds and the purples but then once you get the palette you kind of realize there aren't a lot of reds and purples in here. There's only this one purple and this one red. This duochrome purple is nice and so is this like shimmery purple but I feel like this palette is missing a deep burgundy color and a deep plum color. Because really the only thing you can do in your crease here is a warm crease. You've got warm browns here. This taupe is a little patchy and it's too light to be anything other than a transition color. You've got reds and oranges here. Every, all this row is duochromes and shimmers. You've got a shimmery or this glitter color here. Like everything is, there's all shimmers and then all the matte colors are like a dark red. And it's just, it's not doing anything for me. I'm not feeling inspired by it. I tried to wear it a few times and it was just whatever. I did my eyeshadow yesterday with retrograde on the lid but it doesn't show up by itself so I put it over top of amber and I just fucking hated the way it looked it was awful it was garbage so I'm returning this palette it was $85 maybe if it was cheaper I would have kept it but like $85 no way um I also have the glam glow glow starter mega illuminizing mega illuminating moisturizer this is not a moisturizer for anyone with dry skin. Like this is like a shimmery, uh, like maybe a shimmery moisturizer for someone with oily skin or like I, I've tried to mix it with foundations. I've tried to put it on before foundation. I've tried so many things for me. It's not enough to be a moisturizer. It's not any different than like my MAC strobe cream or like my hourglass primer, which is illuminating. So like, it's just for $50, it's totally not worth it. I got the color Pearl Glow, but I just, I think if you have dry skin, you should just skip it, which is funny because most people with oily skin don't want dewy, don't want dewy stuff on their face. So I don't know who the fuck they made that for. No idea. Um, I have the Ciate Glitter Flip. This is in the shade Iconic. I think I mentioned in my Sora VIB sale, which is when I bought this, that I applied this and it's just okay. It's black. It's a black lipstick with a blue glitter to it. My first problem with this is the applicator. I don't know if people will tell, but like it's kind of too fuzzy, which means that you really cannot get a clean line around your lips. I let it dry for two minutes, smacked my lips together, and I found that it pulls some of the liquid lipstick off. Like it didn't dry fast enough. Even though it says only to leave it for one minute and smack your lips, but I left it for two and it still just felt like nothing. Um, I smacked my lips together. It kind of made it patchy. The glitter wasn't as exciting. Like I have the Cap On Glimmer Veils and I honestly think they're so much better. I'm going to exchange this for the blue Cap On Glimmer Veil because this is just not exciting. It doesn't last through. It's not like a regular lip liquid lipstick where it's going to stay on your lips and be budge proof. Like this is going to smear and the last thing I need is a black lipstick that's not going to stay put because that sounds fucking dangerous. So she's going back. Um, I have the Not Your Mother's Clean Freak Refreshing Dry Shampoo. This is just the baby size one, but it does nothing for my hair. So that's a regret. I have the Anastasia. These are their new matte liquid lips or matte lipsticks in the shade Brandy. It's a beautiful color. It's like a brown tone red. And I love matte lipsticks, but I find that this is too dry, like not too dry on my lips, but it's too dry to apply. Like I find that it's dragging. So you get those skip marks along the edges and along the top. It's hard to do like with so many good matte liquid lipsticks that are so easy to apply now. I want like my tube liquid lipsticks to be a little bit creamier so that they glide on like the Maybelline liquid lipsticks are bomb. Even I find this is drier than the MAC liquid lipsticks and most people find the MAC mattes super dry so like I don't think this is worth the money maybe it's just that it could just be that shade but it just was like dragging on my lips and I wanted none of it I've only tried to wear it twice and then I said fuck it um I have two ColourPop products here the first is their no filter concealer um I love that the shade name is not on here I believe I bought oh yeah it is it's 
number 10 neutral 10 light neutral I'm guessing oh fair neutral and now my problem with this is not the formula it's that I just cannot wear it I hate that every company in the world thinks that I am not a real human that I don't exist it's so hard for me to find a concealer shade that matches me fair shades are either yellow or neutral undertones which like I can go with a neutral undertone but I would prefer a pink undertone because I have pink undertones but like look at the color of this fucking concealer look how dark it is first of all this oxidizes as you can see it looks lighter in the tube than it is on my hand but regardless it's fucking peach and it's way too dark for my skin this is not fair neutral who are the fair people that you have seen this there's one shade lighter than this called fair warm i'm guessing because it's light it's yellow toned but i'm going to assume it's probably also this it's in the same probably shade color but it's a different undertone which i'm not here for so thank you, ColourPop, for telling me I don't exist. Um, the other ColourPop item I have here is from their My Little Pony collection. By the way, cutest packaging ever. This is the a pressed paste. Bleh. This is a pressed powder face highlighter. I don't remember the name because it's not on the package. You get custom packaging, but not the name. It's on the bottom of the pan, I believe. But like, I'm not popping out. I'm lazy. I just find that this is such a chalky highlighter that has no pigmentation. Like, I'm gonna rub a bunch of that on my hand. Like, on my hand, you're like, okay, looks nice, a little chalky, but then if I rub it on my hand, like, can you see it? Because I can't see it. Like, you get the blue purpley duochrome, kind of, but like, you don't get the base shadow, so you just have purple glitter on your face, and that's stupid. I mean, it was only a couple dollars, so it's not a big deal, but don't love it. I have one more eyeshadow palette and it's the Lorac Pro palette which I'm sure some people will, will want to murder me for. This is what it looks like and it's just, I think my problem is it's just looks like every other palette I bought. Maybe if this had been like the first neutral palette I ever bought I'd be like ooh baby she's nice. But like I find that like do I need a white, a cream, a white, a cream and a light pink and then a mauve? Like this all, I hate <laughs> when eyeshadow palettes. I know I hate when eyeshadow palettes don't have a light shade that I can use, but I think more than that, I hate when three light shades are taken up by different undertones. So you've got white, you've got a yellow undertone, you've got a pink undertone. Like, I don't need that. And then the same thing here, you have nude and champagne, which are the same fucking color. Do you see a difference here? Do you? No, because they're the fucking same color. Again, one has a yellow undertone and one has a pink under, or one has a beige undertone, one has a pink undertone. Then you have this color here, which has a yellow undertone, like, I'm not gonna use a bunch of these shades. I just feel like there aren't a lot of looks I can do with this. Like, I used it today, which is just, like, my generic everyday eyeshadow palette. I put taupe and mauve as my transition colors, pewter in the crease with sable and espresso to deepen it, and I put champagne all over the lid, and I used cream as my highlight. It's a nice eyeshadow color. The shadows blended really nicely, but it's just not something I'm ever going to reach for. Like, what is this deep purple doing here? What are you going to do with this deep purple with no other deep purples? There's no other purples in this fucking palette. What am I going to do with this? Same with this garnet color, which is gorgeous. Like, what am I going to do with that with no other ready colors in the palette? It's just trying to cover too many bases at the same time, I think. It's trying to be too universal, which, I mean, it's great for someone who's starting out with makeup. It's probably super awesome. But for me, someone who has so much makeup, like, I just... I don't reach for it. I use it today to just force myself to, to, to convince, to confirm that I didn't like it and confirmed. The last thing I have here is a hair product. This is Overtone. It's, this is the Go Deep Overtone Vibrant Silver Weekly Treatment. And this is the Overtone Vibrant Silver Daily Conditioner. Now, Overtone is basically a color depositing treatment. So this is a treatment that you apply to your hair. And then this is a daily conditioner that you use. It's supposed to maintain your hair. The problem is overtone is made to be used on brassy hair and so because my hair is so cool toned some silver treatments on me especially this like it looks purple in the container Ooh, that just almost fell everywhere it looks purple in the container but i applied it all over my hair i washed it out it turned my hair dark blue and i was like well that's not what i wanted so i just washed my hair a lot until it came out because i was having none of that and I find that the silver daily conditioner does fuck all in the shower. I find that when you watch videos on Overtone and on their website and stuff, the best results are seen when you use it on dry hair. Like, basically, you're using it as a hair dye, which I want something that I can use in the shower that's gonna make my life easier. If I have to put it on my hair and leave it on for a couple hours, I'm basically dyeing my hair. And, like, I'm fine with that, but that's not what this was supposed to be. So, 
I just regret buying this. It was expensive. I think I paid like 80 bucks for the treatment, this, and I got two little conditioners with it. And like, I just, I think my Pravana uh, conditioner or conditioning mask, toning mask does a thousand times a better job than either of those did. So I would not recommend it. I'm sure it's great for other colors of hair, but I think silver is so touchy, especially because if you're trying to maintain silver, your hair already has those cool tones to them. So in order for me to, if I had to wait till my hair got brassy again, I'd want to kill myself. So yeah, I don't know. It just turns my hair too blue. Some people like a blue silver. If you like a blue silver, go for it. But if you want a more like that steel titanium silver, you're not going to find it with those products. <sighs> So that is everything that I regret purchasing. Some stuff I'll be returning. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below what you regret purchasing and if there's anything that I should buy when I return this stuff. Thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you next time. Bye.